Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring actually a video which a lot of my subscribers have been requesting me to make one. Basically, I will be going over how to configure and start uh, an Express API using TypeScript. So that's actually um, a bit complicated for those who've never done this before because there is a lot of configuration that goes behind actually starting your API. However, when you do it the first time, you can take notes on how to actually do it and you can see that it's actually pretty straightforward. You only need to configure some stuff uh, like ad additional st stuff so that you're able to make your application work and before we actually get into the video if you guys could leave a like that would really really help the channel grow it would help the algorithm to push my video out to more people so i would really appreciate if you guys could do that and also if you want to check out um a really easy way to deploy any apis um, even this api that we're going to build here in this video if you want to check that out i have a link, a link in the description for zit.co um, it is a really nice platform completely free really fast um, I have a video teaching you guys how to deploy it there. So if you want to check it out, it's in the description. So let's actually get into how to configure everything in our application. So you can see right here, we have um, VS Code opened and I actually have um, it opened inside of a folder called TypeScript Tutorial Node. Um, I just called it whatever, but you can just open it on your folder where your application is going to run. And before we actually um, start um, installing packages and creating files in our project, we actually have to use um, an, a global library called TypeScript. There's actually a global library called TypeScript, which will allow us to configure everything uh, in, in a much easier manner. So I really recommend installing it. And I actually open up the terminal here. Um, I'm using Mac, but in Windows should be the same thing. I'm also using Yarn as the package manager in this tutorial. However, um, I, I'll just show you guys how to do it in NPM as well. So to install this um, in the MacBook, um, you basically just need to press um, type the command sudo. Then if you're using Yarn, you say Yarn global because it's going to be a global package then add and then typescript i actually already added this so i won't um, install it again but after you press enter it's going to ask for your computer's password you can just put it in and it's going to install this globally and if you're using windows um i think it should be pretty similar but if you're using um something like npm you can just write npm install um dash g um, to mean global and also just the name of the package, right? And TypeScript and also sudo in front of this. I forgot. You can just put sudo in front of this like this and it should work, but I don't actually use um, NPM. And at the end, um, if after install it, you can check to see if it's actually working by running um, TSC, which is um, the command we're going to be using to test this and slash slash version. And you can see mine is running on version 4.1.5, which if it shows a version, it means it's installed. Now that we use this, we can actually use um, the TSC command to configure and create our TS config file, which is actually a JSON file, which is going to like contain all of the information regarding our uh, TypeScript configuration. And that's actually the first command we're going to run over here. I'm going to open up my command. Um, my terminal over here, as you can see, um, I'm just going to clear up everything. Okay, so in here, we actually need to run our command TSC in it. And to actually run that you can just write TSC, then two slashes and in it like this, um, it will say successfully created a TS config file. And you can see that it, it appears automatically here in our left, we don't have to write anything, it, it does it automatically to us, which is really nice. However, we need to make some changes to this just so that we can um, satisfy some conditions that we want in our application. For example, when I write a real API, I really want to be following the new standards of JavaScript, right? Um, in the sense that for example, I don't really want to use um, modules for import, I, I want to use import statements, for example, I want to follow the new JavaScript um, patterns, right. So to do that, I can just change this to any type of ECMAScript, um, I'm gonna I can use six, I can use seven, I'm going to use six, just as an example over here. And it will basically compile our TypeScript uh, to satisfy the version that we want to that we put over here, right. And what do I mean by compile? Uh, for those who don't know, when you write TypeScript code, it doesn't actually build as TypeScript because um, no browser will read TypeScript directly, it will actually read JavaScript. So what happens is when you build your application in TypeScript, it will then further compile to JavaScript, and the browser will read it as JavaScript TypeScript will only help us in the development process so that we don't actually um, struggle with any bugs, right. So this is the first thing we need to do. And then also what we need to do is we need to uncomment the output directory and the root directory over here. So I'm just going to uncomment both of them. And 
what happens is, as I mentioned, we should have two folders inside of our application. One of them is for where our compiled JavaScript files go, and the other one is actually where we write our code, so the, the TypeScript files, right? So what I like to do is I actually like to create a folder called build, or you can call it whatever you want. Um, then I create actually another one called SRC, which means source, right? But you can call this whatever you want. It's just for organization purposes. Um, but make sure that the name you give is actually the name that you put over here. So our compiled JavaScript files should go to the build um, folder and our um, TypeScript files should go to our SRC folder. And this is basically what you do for this and this is totally fine. And also by the but at the end what you also need to do is you need to find the um, how do I say the module resolution tag. Um, let me find it. Module I'll just control F module resolution. Okay, over here. So you just need to uncomment this because as you can see right here, by the way, if you want to check out all the things that you can do with your TypeScript config file, um, it just expect like it just explain what this tag does. And as you can see, it will just um, specify module resolution strategy to node or classic, right? So you can choose we choose node, um, which is already what comes with our TS config file. So this is basically it for changing our TS config. And that's basically the configuration done. Now we only need to actually install our packages and configure our package.json and then build our code, right? So to do that, let's actually start installing our packages. So let's actually just run the command yarn add. And inside of here, let's put all the different packages that we want to install. So basically, what we want to install is obviously express because we're going to run an express server, then um, we want to install TypeScript. And the reason why we actually install TypeScript is because um, we have installed TypeScript as a global package. So that that allows us to use the TSC command anywhere in our computer, right to even to help us start our application. However, um, we also need to install it inside of our project because maybe this code might run in a computer which doesn't have the TypeScript um, package installed globally. So you need to account for these kind of cases. So we just installed also TypeScript inside of here. And then we can add more packages. For example, I like to use node one for every sort of development, because it will constantly update your your server restart your server when you write your code. And I just I don't see myself coding a, an express API or anything in node.js without using node one. So then we also need to install install two more packages. Actually, one very important package we need to install is the TS node package. And this will just allow us to run again, compile our code and help us um, configure everything for TypeScript. And finally, um, these two packages that I'm going to add right here are optional. However, they will help you a lot because remember, TypeScript on its own doesn't account for code that is pre written um, for libraries. For example, if you're writing code in Express, there's you need to ha you need to account for types that can be already built in in Express. And if you're writing node code, TypeScript doesn't account for certain functions and certain stuff that comes with node. So we actually need to install the types for those two libraries inside of our application. So to install the type for, um, for example, Express, we can just say at add, add types slash express. And for node, we can do the same thing at types slash node. And if you've code, coded in TypeScript before, you know that this is how you actually install types, every library that you install, you'll probably need to install um, the types for that library, because if they have support, actually, so it will help you just um, configure TypeScript to adapt to your to the library you're using. So now we can run this. And you can see that it will actually install everything. Um, mine finished just stalling. So over here at the left, we should have, um, again, the build the SRC, and all of these files appeared because I just installed the package, right? So you can see we have a package.json over here at the left, we can also run, um, how can I say, uh, yarn dot init, which is actually really nice. So I'll just come over here and say, yarn init, which will actually ask us ask us for a lot of stuff, um, questions about our application, it will just help us um, move for further and faster in configuring our package.json. Um, you can see all of that information appeared here at the bottom. Um, and now we have our package.json where we can actually start um, making it work, right? Adapting it to TypeScript. I actually like putting this at the top here. The reason why it appeared at the bottom is because I actually installed the packages before um, running yarn init, but it doesn't really matter. If you're using npm again, just run npm init for this to work. And over here, we actually just have to write um, some small configurations, which will come inside of the scripts tag. So what kind of scripts do we need to write? Well, remember, we're first going to um, run our application. So our application is going to run on 
um, TypeScript, as I mentioned. So we need to have a start script over here. Then we also need a build script over here. So I'll just write build. And we also need a dev uh, a dev script over here, right? Because it's going to be what we're going to run in development. So the start is going to be actually what um, runs with um, what actually compiles our code in JavaScript, it should run in JavaScript. So what happens is you can see in our build folder, it shouldn't have anything, right? But when we create our first um, file, which I like to call index.ts, um, this is going to be the, the entry point of our application, right? So what happens is when we run TypeScript, it's going to create an index.js in our build folder over here. So literally, I can just come over here and say TSC, and it's going to it's going to convert all the files from the SRC folder, which are TypeScript into the build folder, uh, and turn them into JavaScript, you can see that nothing happened because um, they didn't put anything in the JavaScript file because we actually haven't write, like didn't write any code in our TypeScript file. But this is kind of like the flow of our project, right? So in our package.json, um, to run the the build files, we can just say, um, node, um, then build, like this build slash, actually, I need to say, dot, slash build slash um, index.js, right? And it has to be JS because the files inside of the build is going to be JS. But for the development, we're going to run actually node one. So when we run um, yarn dev, it's going to run node one. So we can say node one um, dot slash SRC slash index dot TS. So this is going to this uh, script this tag is going to run the TypeScript version. And in our build, we actually just need to put um, TSC and the P tag, uh, the, the P flag, sorry, and a dot at the end. And this will uh, further like just configure just build our application and compile our code. So this are the all the configurations we actually have to write. And this should be working for like should be actually making our application work. However, we need to now write our code in our index.ts right. So over here, we can literally just write a normal express server. However, we're going to make some minor adaptations so that it will satisfy TypeScript. So for example, we can now use the import st uh, statement, right, which is really nice. So I can actually import express like this, import express from express. And you can see that it will work. Um, then what we can do is we can just create an app from this. So similar to how you would do normally with express. And at the bottom, I'll just say app.listen. And when it listens, I actually wanted to listen in the port 3001. And I just want to have a function over here, which says um, console.log um, server running something like this, right? Now we can actually run this and see that it will work. And to run it, we can actually just say yarn dev, or if you're using npm, I think it's something like npm dev or npm run dev. So if I run this, you'll see that it will start running node one, and it actually starts our server, we receive here server running, but we didn't create any endpoints. And you can see that it looks very similar to normal JavaScript. So what is the difference? Well, now we can include types not only for functions, but also for um, any variables that we create, for example, this over here is a callback function, it obviously doesn't return anything. So what I like to do is I just put uh, I just say that the, the return type is void for any functions that doesn't return anything. So this is something we can do now. And if I want to create, for example, a get request, I'll just show an example for you guys here. I'm just going to create a get request for the route, um, just a standard route. And over here, we will normally just write a rack a res and write a simple um, callback function. And I'll just say, uh, return res.json and send a message, for example, an object containing a message saying, please, um, like the video, <laughs> something like this. Um, what happens is this is normal JavaScript, how do we convert this to actual TypeScript, right? So in order to do that, we can actually grab types that come like we can actually grab the types over here at the top. And the types that we can grab from Express, for example, um, Express built like build built it in um, certain types like request and response, right? So we can just use them as the types for our rec and res like this and response. And for this function, we are not returning anything in theory. So we can just use for example, um, the void as I did before, right. And over here, completely fine, but we can now use um, TypeScript inside of our Express API, which is really cool. If I wanted to create a, a number, for example, age, I would have to put the, the, the type over here. 
something like this, right? So this is basically how you actually create everything. Um, there's many different types that you can grab from the built in types that we imported into our application. Um, for example, if you're making a, a middleware, you can um, import the next function um, type, there's many things you can do actually. So it's really cool. And um, a lot of people have be actually asked me to make this video because I already made a lot of videos on TypeScript, but I actually never showed how to create a backend using TypeScript. I've made I've showed how to use TypeScript on react, but not actually on creating an express API using TypeScript. So this is actually something that really confused me when I first tried this out like a year ago, but because it, it, there's a lot of configuration, and that really annoys a lot of people. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. I'm actually going to deploy this code into GitHub so you guys can just access this configuration. And if you're interested in just copy and pasting or cloning it into your application, then feel free to do so. So check out in the description where I will have the code. And yeah, that's basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting three times a week and I would really appreciate it. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it and I see you guys next time.